Welcome back to Brad's Car Mods. I'm Brad. Today is the day we're gonna pull the engine on this Miata. Finally, we got the, the K24 prepped and ready to go. So now we need to empty that engine bay. I got some uh, crew here helping me out. I got my brother-in-law Carl, my nephew Owen, and of course Sam's underneath the car. And uh, we're gonna go and, and take everything off the engine that's attached to the car and pull the engine and transmission at the same time. So we'll go underneath, pull the exhaust, pull the drive shaft, disconnect the drivetrain from the rest of the car. And then the goal is to keep the wheels and suspension and brakes and stuff intact. And it's because I'm replacing the subframe with a new one. It's in that box over there. That way we can try to keep it all in one piece. And then I got a new already depowered uh, steering rack we're gonna put back in. Eventually the goal is to swap everything over to that new subframe and put everything back in. That may not be today. The goal today is to just pull the engine and transmission and get that out. And that way we can clean up the engine bay and then prep to convert the transmission over to mount to the, the Honda motor. So take the hood off and start taking stuff off. All right, step one underneath the car, we're gonna remove the exhaust. So we'll start with the muffler and start taking the exhaust pieces off piece by piece. Mm -hmm. Have to remove the, the muffler and then the exhaust pieces and then the O2 sensor up in the middle and just take all the exhaust off. And then afterwards, there's a um, there's a uh, metal frame right here that a Miata has called a PPF power plant frame, I think. Uh, basically, it's to, because it's a unibody roadster, that's to help stiffen the body all the way down the line of the car. So we're going to take that out too, just to keep it out of the way, so we can because it's attached to the back of the transmission and the diff. And so we need to disconnect those two because we got to pull the transmission. Okay, we got the buffler off. Little WD-40 on the rubber hangers helps. Um, there's also a hanger tool. It's like a big set of pliers. I don't have that, but we still got it. Next step is to move the next, to remove the next section of the exhaust and the O2 sensor about halfway up as a tool. It's like this to get around the wires on the O2 sensor. So we put that on there and then use a, whoops, use a ratchet to uh, hook into that and then remove the O2 sensor. We got the exhaust out, got the, uh, you can see the O2 sensor just dangling there. Now we're going to move back toward the back here and disconnect disconnect the diff from the drive shaft. So it's just those four bolts. We'll uh, loosen each one, kind of rotate the wheels to get to the other sides. You can see the cutout there in the, the, the diff side. So we'll disconnect those and the drive shaft just has some splines up there that slides into the back of the transmission. So we'll disconnect that and pull that out of the way. And then we'll move up toward the front of the car and finish removing the exhaust and the cross brace up there. Crew up front has radiator drained of coolant and now just kind of removing some of the hoses so that we can actually pull the radiator. You can see you got the brackets off already. Goal is just to get that out of the way. One, so we don't damage it, right? You don't want to damage the radiator trying to pull this out because the radiator will work just fine with the uh, K24. But to pull the engine and transmission up out, all this bottom part here, we just hit the radiator so we don't want to damage it and we just make some more room. So, hey. Parts coming off. I love to see it. We got the uh, radiator pulled. Look at all that room. And of course, there's a secondary uh, radiator here for the air conditioning condenser. You can see that down here. Somewhere. Oh, that's a giant butterfly or uh, bug of some kind. Yeah, that guy. Ew. I put a bunch of coolant in there. Sweet tea bottle. Had to put it oh yeah, yeah, don't drink. I wrote coolant on it. That's not pee or sweet tea, that's coolant. Wow, wow, wow. Things are coming off, progress being made. Drained the power steering pump and pulled the pump. We're gonna pull the hood real quick just to make sure that's out of the way. It's just four bolts. When you do something like that though, you just gotta make sure you do some marks on here so that when you go to put the hood back on, you can line it back up the way it was. Got the drive shaft out and disconnected some of the bolts on the PPF from the transmission. The next step is to go inside the car real quick, remove the center console and remove the shifter because uh, the shifter sits right on top of the transmission. You know, the shifter's gotta come off. All right, Sam, come over here. 
I want to go over there. You just hold it up. I'm gonna hold it. You remove the oh, nuts. Yeah. Do it for you. So mm. it's going. <laughs> no, it's under the car. It's fine. I'm just gonna drop all four. Butter fingers. Yeah, mine's I in the it. car. Yes, sir. Oh, well, that's not bad at all. It's aluminum. All right, where are we going with it? Now you it's grab fine. this, which is just a little magnet. Get down in there. Get a little twist. Hopefully get that bolt back. Just try not to bump this hood, okay, guys? Oh, I had it. It's right there. Yeah, I agree. Got it. Surgery. <laughs> the interior bits of these cars is super easy to to take out. So the center console just is literally just two screws, and then there's uh, screws on the side right here. On either side, you unscrew those, and then we take the um, it just pops off, and this whole center console will slide up. There's some wiring for the um, uh, windows there, and then you'll see the whole thing just slides right up with ease. So we have to go up <laughs> on the front first and then it'll kind of go out that way. Okay. But there's, there's wires underneath here so we gotta pull it up and disconnect. Uh, pull it up a little farther. I can't move it towards you. Oh, there you go. We got the center console out. A little bit of a pain, but um, just to fight with the wire underneath for the uh, window switches. This just slides up and over. All right, and then uh, this is the IRP shifter. So this obviously is not the uh, factory Miata shifter. I did a whole video on this, two videos actually, showing the installation and kind of a review of it. Um, but it's just this one simple, just four screws holding this plate on, and we take those off, and then these uh, three screws here actually hold the shifter to the um, top of the shift turret, so that's what's got to come out. Oh, that one got stuck. Oh, oh stop losing stuff. <laughs> oh gosh. It'll be fine. Ugh, there's a plenty of bands down there. All right, we got the shifter out. So you can see the top of the turret here. So this is the top of the transmission. You can see I'm kind of moving it because it's all loose down there. Pull this rubber shielding off of here. All right. So now the transmission is no longer connected on the inside. Uh, so we're done up here. Actually, what we're gonna do is, so we don't make a mess, we'll take a turkey baster and siphon that oil out into some other container so that when we pull it out, it doesn't spill everywhere. And then we're also gonna go underneath and drain the transmission fluid itself. Back underneath the car. They said earlier we got the AC deleted, so the AC comes in through firewall here to go up into the evaporator and pour and stuff. Um, that's all disconnected. Power steering's done. Power steering's done. All this has been dis this wiring harness has been disconnected. None Ooh. of that's going to be used. Obviously, that's a wiring harness for a Mazda. BP4 and we're putting in a Honda so none of that will be used we're just trying to get stuff out of the way um, eventually we'll disconnect the wiring up to a point because we're going to use some of the harness that's the harness that's inside the car and we'll do an adapter between the Honda wiring harness that I have yet to buy and the, yeah, the Mazda side. My nephew just asked how close we are to getting the engine actually out so I think we need to still disconnect the sway bar because that's kind of in the way um, we still have some heater hoses going in to the from the back of the motor through the uh, firewall there and then clutch still needs to be disconnected and I think a wire or two down there alternator Carl said an alternator he's about done with all the wiring and hoses up top there's a vacuum line still apparently Sam and I are gonna crawl back underneath the car uh -uh. grab that light How far are we going? Way up farther this time. Oh, here, there's the other two. Oh, two cents right there. Yep. <laughs> you can just leave this one. Where's that? I don't know. I don't know either. All right, let's turn this light on. Um, <laughs> here we go. All right. 
So we're going to leave the, that bolt in for now because it's keeping the weight of the transmission uh, until we're ready. So that crossbar, Sam, that metal that needs to go out. Yep. Um, and then up here is where the fork is for the clutch. So we're going to have to disconnect that from the slave cylinder. There's a bolt on the side of the transmission uh, that, has, that connects the slave cylinder to there. Um, and also that exhaust pipe, this down pipe right here. That's the pipe, whatever you call it. It would be good if we disconnected that because that is also going to kind of be in the way. So I'll start with that cross pipe. That's probably a couple of 17 mils. Cross bar. That pipe. So hang on a second, I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. And it? Yep. There we go. Yeah, So I want you to take those four out and then we'll hand me that bar and then take those bolts and just thread them back into the hole so we don't lose them. Okay. You gonna catch the bar or something? Well, hold on to it with one hand while you hold on to the dac dac with the other hand. <laughs> Give it a dac dac. Dac dac. Come on. Dac dac. We call those Uga Dugga. Uga Same thing. Oh, well, watch out. One take that out. Two Duggas. And that bar. In the bar. Put them back down. Where's Put them back down. Here. Screw those back. Just thread them in lightly. We don't need to go very far. That's what, we just now know where those those go. The other way. Sparky. What is it? Was it working? There we go. All right. So oh. sorry. Slide up just a little farther. Ouch! <laughs> Pinch my finger. <laughs> the other way. Slide up the other way. The other way. I the front don't of the car. Know what the other way is. <laughs> you see, um, on this side of the engine, there's a bolt up there that the slave cylinder from the clutch is attached to. It did up here. Right there. Yeah. Here. This? That one right there. Yep. We gotta take that one off. I think that's a 14. I'll be right back, and I'll give you even get to You got my gloves while you're at it. Yep. Press down. Press down. Thank you. Try this, Sam, and if this one works, you can use the ratcheting side to undo that. It might be smaller. It might be a 12. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely a 12. A 12? Okay. Yeah. Oh, which one? Come on. There we go. I'm getting the bolts go out. Down. Get it? Yep. Yeah. 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 If I hook the battery back I up got and it. hit the key, and but remove the... That came out of my face. We got Sam down here trying to undo the last exhaust bolt before we <laughs> can't get it. Pull this exhaust pipe out. And then once that's done, we should be able to undo motor mounts and see what else is holding us back. Only one way to find out. Engine's out, engine's on the ground, transmission separated, job done. Thank you guys so much for watching Brad's Car Mods and part three of the K-Swap project. Thanks to my family here for coming over to help. Awesome learning experience. Everybody had fun. Love it. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.